my name is Katie or KB Does Art and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to 3D model a bulletproof vest which this was actually requested by someone so um, I actually have never really done a tutorial on uh, like uh, anything that a person would really wear um, so this will be interesting I'm excited to kind of try this out and uh, see how uh, we can kind of create it together uh, I am going to be using references for both the front and the uh, the back so go ahead and click space and we're gonna go to the front view um, and let's see I do I'll, I'll remember to link the reference for you guys but you're gonna want to go to view image plane import image and then I'm just gonna find my reference really quick um, I'm gonna use the same reference for both I'm gonna scale this guy up let's see that should probably be fine and then I just want to move it. Remember our shortcuts for scaling. R is scaling. Moving is W. I'm just kind of trying to center it and place it on the origin here. So you can kind of do that as needed. I'm also going to click looking through camera right here. That way it's only visible in the front view and not in the other views that we have. All right, and then I also want to put it on the back. So let's just grab this in the outliner and do control D. So we have both. I'm going to name this one back and this one will be front. And then this one, uh, I'm just going to move it over because I need to, uh, let's see, I'm trying to put it right on top of this one. So I'm just going to line it up. Yeah, it's probably like right there. So this will be the back, this will be the front. We're going to need to go switch into the back view, however. So I'm going to hold space, uh, click Maya, and then change this to the back view. All right, and so now we have this guy. So for back, uh, I'm going to click looking through camera, and that way uh, it's only visible in this one. So now we have the front one here, the back one here. Um, I guess really I'm, I'm going to be starting with this with a cube. I think like what I want to do is create uh, kind of like this uh, base, uh, which will be out of a cube and then we'll create all the other parts doing kind of like some bridges and, and things like that. So let's go ahead and grab a cube um, and then uh, I guess I'll just scale it on up to be the length of this small part right here. And then I want to click Q, go into vertex mode, and move these vertices to the top, which is, I guess, about here. That should be good. And then I actually want to scale these vertices out just a tad. My reference is a little off-centered, so I'm going to push it over to be a bit more accurate. There we go. And then it uh, looks like now we just need to add in some uh, edge loops, some multi-cuts. So hold shift, hold right click and grab your multi-cut tool and then hold control and let's make some middle cuts using our middle mouse button while holding control. I'm going to do that many for now. I think that should be good. Um, and then we're going to be grabbing uh, our row of vertices and just scale them on that side axis to fit this shape a little bit better. All right, that looks good. So now what we need to do is add uh, this little curve here, which means just selecting these vertices and pushing them on down. And I also want to add another multi-cut, kind of like where that top uh, starts like really curving up. And then I'll be just pushing this vertice up a little bit and this up as well. So it looks like actually these vertices on the sides could come in a little bit and then move up. There we go. And then I'm going to add one more multi cut here and these guys will just be out just a tad more. All right, I'm just going to look at the general shape that I have right now. If you click three on your keyboard, you can see how it's kind of smoothing out, which uh, I'm actually pretty happy with that. It looks good so far. 
the thing that I want to uh, fix right now is I want to add two more multi cuts in the middle here and then I want to just bring these down to get a more rounded neck like that all right cool so um, as for like basically that that is really what the base is going to be um, we can go ahead and smooth out this object so it looks like this uh, I think the thickness feels pretty good right now. I don't have a side reference, but I, I'm going to say maybe like that's about good. All right. So to smooth it out, make sure you press one on your keyboard and then we're going to do mesh smooth. It only has two divisions right now. It kind of depends on how high or low poly you want your model to be. Um, I think I'm going to stick with one for right now and then we can change it later. But that's how it looks with the uh, smoothing on when you press three on your keyboard, and that's how it looks with our one key. Okay, so um, really the next part is gonna be uh, creating the back, and then we're going to be um, bridging these guys together. So first up, why don't we go ahead and duplicate this guy? And then we're just going to move it back. Yep. Yeah, okay, we're going the right direction. So you'll want to move it back this way. That way it should look green on this side. That way we're editing this one to be our back. And then I'm just kind of going to guess on how far away they should be. Like how wide a person <laughs> is. Maybe like that. That should be good. Okay, so just looking at these references a little bit, it looks like we have a, a portion that comes off of the back, which we can go ahead and um, uh, build that. It goes on the front and the back. So that can be something uh, separate. So like literally a separate cube, or we could even build it off of the existing ones. I think I'm going to go ahead and just build it off a new cube. That way I can edit it kind of as needed. Um, so go ahead and grab a cube and then scale it to this size. And then we'll move the vertices to be about that length. And then what I want to do is add in a multi-cut at this line. Um, this is kind of where there is like a shift um, in some depth right there. So I want to make sure that that is, is represented there. Okay, so that is looking pretty good. I'm going to move these vertices up a little bit and then let's add some multi cuts going across. All right. I want to take this whole object. You'll see, like, we can't see all of it right now. Um, and that's because it's hidden way back here. So go ahead and grab that and I guess push it this way forward so that it, we can fully see it. Um, I don't really know the thickness. I'm just going to guess it's about like that thick away. It is just cloth, so. I do want to also make it thinner, so you can click R and scale it in like that. It is just a piece of cloth, so like, you know, shouldn't be that hefty. All right, then if we go back to our front view, you can see we made a multi-cut here. I want to take these vertices and just drag them down to make like a nice little curve going like this. And I want to make a multi-cut here, and I'm just going to scale that just out a little bit to give it a little bit more curve, like that. All right, so now what I want to do is I actually want to take um these faces here and i'm just going to press w and i want to push them into the mesh like this all right and then i'm going to take these this row of vertices and push them out a little bit to be like that and then these also go back into the backpack so you can connect them back on and clip them like this and then also if you want to clip this one a little bit better you can move him in and clip it like that into the mesh 
All right. I feel pretty good about that. Um, we're going to probably want to add two more multi-cuts there. All right. That's looking better. So this also goes on the back, it looks like, which means that we can potentially um, just like duplicate it on over. Um, there is something that I want to kind of look at a little bit more on this vest. So it looks like it's a little different than our front. It's got a little loop here, a little pin. I think we can use the overall shape though. So you can go ahead and just duplicate this guy. You can do that uh, doing control D. And then I want to rotate it 180 degrees on the Y axis and then move it so that it's clipping into my back mesh like this. So now they should match like that. All right, so we've got both pieces, a little bit of detail, and now I wanna start on those straps on the top. So it looks like um, there are a couple things kind of creating these straps. So first, um, I want to create this portion. Um, basically, that's going to be like the main bulk of the strap, which we could create that uh, a couple different ways. Um, we could use a cube that we just manipulate to look that way. Um, there's also, uh, I think like you could technically get away with like using the pipe. Um, I guess let's, let's, uh, let's use the pipe for now. You can get that by uh, clicking on nothing. So clicking in the blank and then holding uh, shift and right click and then going down to the pipe. So now that we have one, I'm gonna move him to just be around here. Obviously our um, radius or our, our thickness is not that much. So if we do like 0.2 and then scale it, let's kind of like test that out a little bit. Maybe like 0.4 actually looks good. I wanna make sure you guys are kind of understanding what I'm creating right now. So I'm trying to create this kind of like strap looking um, thing right here, which is basically like a, uh, um, I guess it's like a, a, a flat cylinder kind of looking thing. Um, and then I'm gonna create a strap that kind of goes through that. But first I'm just gonna make this portion. So let's move it to be about like there. Just make it a little bit longer. Okay, that should be okay for now. Uh, now what I wanna do before we get too far is create another cube. And this is the cube that I'm actually gonna use to make the strap that goes from one side to the other. Now I wanna really quickly look at my back reference. Okay, so the back and the front, it looks like the back the front is composed of these uh, connectors, where the back, it's just sewn into the back. So that means that we'll use the back as our starting point and then go into that front piece. So let's go ahead and get that lined up here. Uh, obviously it should not be that long, maybe like about there. I'm gonna go ahead and go into, uh, let's go into our, side view. Sure, we'll use the left X. All right, I wanna use this as the strap. So maybe about that thick. And I'm gonna make it the length that it needs to cover. So about there, maybe like a little bit under um, because I will have kind of a connector, things like that. And then I'm gonna add some multi-cuts going on these guys. So I just added uh, I guess three, and I'll make one down the middle as well, like that. 
Remember the multi cuts is just holding control and doing the middle mouse click like we've done before. All right, so now I think what I want to do is if you go into object mode and then go to deform and then nonlinear and do bend, I think I want to use the bend deform for this. So first, let's go into perspective view. We need to make sure that this is in the position of our, um, I guess, of, of our uh, geometry. So I'm just going to rotate that 90 degrees and then up the curvature. Okay, so it looks like it actually needs to come 90 degrees uh, on the Z axis. Okay, and so that's the bend at 70. So I kind of think like around negative 45 is kind of where I'm, I'm aiming. Maybe like about there. And then you'll notice that um, you can move the geometry, but it'll kind of mess with that curve. So um, something that we're going to want to do is delete the... Um, you can delete by type and do the history and then it'll get rid of the curve and now our geometry is permanent with that uh, D form. So make sure you want it to be permanent before you do that, um, but that is a very good trick. Right now I'm just going to take these edges at the bottom and bevel them real quick. Just give it like two segments, should be good. Uh, that way it looks like this when it smooths out. And then this is actually what's going to end up going around that. So we can apply that same bend uh, on this portion. I'm going to scale it down a little bit. It doesn't need to be that big. Um, first couple things. I want to make sure that this actually does fit. Like this is the correct size. So that does look pretty good. I'm going to scale it down just like a tad. And then... Um, we want to make sure we have multi cuts in it because it needs a place to bend, so that should be good. And then you can do the same thing of uh, just doing deform nonlinear bend, and then we can, you know, up that to negative 45. So you can see it's going the wrong way right now, which means we just need to uh, rotate that bend curve. All right, so right now it looks like it's bending a little too much, so maybe not negative 45. Maybe we don't do as much. That looks better. Let's go ahead and move this pipe on up and see how it is looking. See if it's clipping anywhere. It looks like it's clipping at the bottom. So I'm just going to change this real quick to just be a bit stronger of a curve and see if that works. Looks like that was too far, so I'm going to do like negative 12 maybe. Okay, that looks good. All right, that's almost like perfect. I'm going to do negative 13. And then move it. Looks like in the middle it's clipping a little bit right here which means that we could do a couple things. Uh, you could literally just take this edge and scale it on up like that to hide that clipping. Um, or you could continue kind of messing with that curve. But there we go. So now we've got kind of a, a strap going through there. Um, if we look back on our reference, you can see that the strap is attached to this portion, uh, which actually I think I want to look up a different reference for that. Um, which like that type of buckle. Um, so I will, I'll remember to also, you know, link that obviously for you guys to check out. All right. So for this reference, um, I'm just going to add it into this um, image plane as well. So there would just be another one here. All right. So... Now we've got this reference. We can kind of scale it to the size. It's probably about maybe that size. I'm just going to move it over here and we'll just model them right here. So grab a cube and move it on over here. There we go. 
We'll do both of these using cubes. So you can just duplicate this, control D, and then move it on over here. Now this one should be pretty easy. Um, we can start up at the top and I'm gonna start with this top piece, which will be this. So move it on up, scale it accordingly. And then I'm gonna add some multi-cuts right here and right here. Then I wanna go into this view and I want to grab these faces like this and then do control E to extrude them. And I'm just gonna up that thickness down to about there. All right, so now I actually do want this portion to kind of shift a bit, which means that I need these two vertices to actually go more like right here. And we're gonna round out this corner like that. So, um, we can do this a couple different ways. We could just bridge these faces. Uh, that's totally fine. So if you go into face mode and do um, edit mesh and let's go to the bridge option box, I'm just gonna do a linear path. And I mean, we don't need that many, maybe like two is fine. And then you can see it perfectly gives us um, a, a completed ring like that. And then obviously we're going to want to move like these vertices down to round out this section a little bit better. And we can also add some more multi-cuts on this section like that. And I'm just actually going to drag these as well, like down to about here. Next, I want to go ahead and take um, these faces and we're going to control E extrude them again and up the thickness to be at that bottom down there. Now, um, in order to get this like smooth transition here, we're just gonna need some more multi-cuts. So grab your multi-cut tool and we're gonna be going into vertex mode and scaling them on down. Okay. So just one more row here I'm going to add, which in order to get that curve, you can kind of add as many multi-cuts in as you feel. Same with this one. All right, so that's good for that shape. I'm gonna move these vertices down and in a little bit just to get that curve. So right now, um, we have a couple issues with our object. Uh, first, part of it is supposed to be hollow. So that means that we need to hollow out part of our object, which we can do a couple different ways. Um, first, obviously there should be no bottom to this, right? Our, our object should be hollow like this. Um, but also the object is supposed to be hollow on these sides like this. So we're gonna need to get rid of those. And then uh, I just wanna double check, okay. So that should be it for our hollow pieces, which means now I'm gonna go into object mode. I wanna scale this just down a little bit. And if we do control E for extruding and then down the thickness. Okay, yeah, so maybe like negative 0.12 or something like that. We just don't want any clipping. See, there's like clipping happening at the top. As long as you don't have that, you're good. So I'm gonna do 0.11. Also, if your image plane's annoying you, uh, all you have to do is just click that image plane and click looking through camera and then you can't see it here. So now you'll notice that our mesh is black. Uh, it's not supposed to be black. So go into object mode and then do mesh display reverse. And that will reverse our display so that we are able to see everything. And then when you click three, this is how it's smoothing out right now. 
Um, which actually is pretty good. I don't really feel like I need to edit that at all. Uh, okay, so that leaves us with this one, which is kind of a fun, a fun shape. Um, this actually will be a little bit easier to create because we don't need to make any of it hollow or anything. So uh, I'm just going to move it up. We're going to start it the same way. So you're just going to scale it to be the size of uh, this. And then we will add uh, two multi-cuts here and here. I will grab those faces and then control E to extrude. We're going to up the thickness. Uh, you can go ahead and take it all the way down to that kind of portion right there. And then we're going to move these two vertices. I'm just going to scale them uh, to be about there. All right. So now what I want to do is I'm going to make multi cuts where this is hitting this portion. I'm sure you guys can kind of guess. We're just going to be bridging it again. So uh, we're going to go ahead and grab this face and this face and we'll do edit mesh. You can just click bridge since we already changed the settings. And then you can do the same thing to those two. Click both those faces and do edit mesh bridge. So now we have those two portions. For this next section, um, we can do this in a couple different ways. I think what I'll do is add in a multi-cut down each of these middles, and then I'm going to, um, extrude like this one, this one, and this one, but I'll extrude them together. So you can take like these three faces and then do control E and push that thickness up to there. Obviously, like these vertices will need to come down a bit further. So you can just grab those and move them in. You can also scale them down because they do not need to be that big. Which actually next what I want to do is take these vertices and push them down to actually go like more like there. You can start and kind of like mold uh, some of these vertices. You'll have to add multi cuts. Like for example, a definitely a multi cut right here to get that like really nice uh, incline. Uh, we'll need some multi-cuts right here and here, which you can just grab that and then move the vertices as needed. Now this is pretty interesting. I think what I'll do is make uh, this general shape using some multi-cuts like this. And then we can kind of decide if we need to play with thickness uh, or anything like that. All right. That's looking pretty good. I'm noticing that I want to bring down these two vertices to hug that edge a little bit more. Just round it out like that. And then I also want to... Um, I'm noticing that like these corners are a little sharp. I guess we'll see when we smooth it out. Maybe it won't need anything. I'm going to add a middle multi-cut here and there and there. And then we can take these vertices and push them up a little bit just to get that rounded edge. All right, now let's go ahead and edit this one real quick. So I'm just going to add some multi-cuts as needed and push them on in. And then add some here as well. It's been a really long time since I've done like fun hard surface modeling. I actually think that this month is going to be one of my first character modeling tutorials. Um, don't hold me to that. I don't know if I'll actually do it, but hopefully. Um, all right, cool. So there's our basic shape. Um, I'm noticing that I added another multi-cut here. So I'm just going to add that in real quick to make them even. There we go, like that. All right, cool. That's looking great. So... Let's smooth it out and kind of see where there's any issues, if any. Okay. Honestly, not awful. Like, I feel pretty pretty good with that, especially for it just being on the 
uh, vest. Um, I think I'm pretty content with that. So why don't we go ahead in and find a way to kind of attach these into our piece. So I'm going to move them on over here. Um, oh, I want to make sure they're the same thickness, obviously. This one needs to be thinner. And then you can actually like move this over here and we can kind of scale it. Uh, let's see, let's rotate it. I want to see if it actually fits because that is important. Okay, actually, yeah, fits great. Good, I think that was a good thickness. We can make it a little bit smaller too if you, if you want to make it even more accurate. There you go. Okay, so now that is at a good point. And since right now they are connected, I guess I'll just group these. So select both of them and do control G to group. And then we can call this like buckle or something like that. All right, let's grab that group of the buckle and I'm gonna move it. Um, oh, actually, if you do modify center pivot, then our pivot will be at the center of this object for the group, which is much nicer. All right, so I'm going to go into our front view because I do actually want to make sure that like our scale isn't super wonky. Um, I'm going to take this front image and just move it back. There we go. Now I can see it. Okay, so it looks like I actually swapped it. Um, I just, I rotated the group the wrong way. <laughs> the group should be this way on the, the, the vest. There we go. And then it looks like it connects. A um, little lower, a little less tilted, something a little bit more like this. There we go. So it'll look something like this, uh, obviously not exactly. We can push it forward a little bit to be clipping like that. All right. So a couple things need to happen. Obviously, we need to attach this buckle um, to the vest, but we also need to attach the other buckle to our um, our handle right here, right? This, this part needs to be attached. So we can do that a couple different ways. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I want to take both of these and move it up a little bit, maybe like that. And then you can also scale this up to be maybe like that. And then I'm just going to move them over. And it looks like even uh, if you group them and do modify center pivot again, I'm just going to move them as a group from now on. Now we can kind of get that rotation going correctly. You can kind of see what I'm going for here. All right, so I think what I want to do is I'm going to go into this side view and I want to take these vertices, but I only want to take the last vertices. So we can kind of figure out a way to, there we go, just grab these guys, um, which there's a couple different ways we could do this. You could literally move the vertices, um, and like angle them and, and such. Um, or we could extrude faces and do that. So uh, I think for now, um, I'm gonna click one and I'm gonna do the face method. So that's gonna be taking these faces like this and I want to extrude them. And uh, then I'm just gonna click W and literally just move them. So that's probably a good place. I'm gonna angle them just a little bit. Maybe like that. Just kind of like making a quick little curve here. You can also take like this edge and bring him kind of like in kind of depending on how you want it to look. All right, I'm gonna take those faces again and I'm gonna do control E 
same exact thing. You can just click W and move them. And then angle them. I'm trying to make it go through this as well. All right, that's pretty close. You can scale them too if you feel like it's not fitting. We might just need to move or scale this edge. All right, that looks better. I'm gonna move this edge out a little bit. All right, so in order to make these match up, I wanna add in a multi-cut here. Also, I wanna take these faces and line them up a little bit better with these guys. Maybe more like that. And then let's select this edge and this edge and this one and do control delete. That way we just have these four faces like this. And then if you do edit mesh bridge and open this bridge option box, um, right there, uh, we can go ahead and click apply and now you'll press three and see how that's looking. All right, I think that looks really good. I That's my first time creating a loop like that, so that was kind of interesting. We're gonna do the same thing on this side. Uh, we'll basically be using a cube that will um, connect uh, this guy to the vest. So definitely make him thinner, maybe like that. And then we're gonna push this um, into the mesh. And actually, we can go look at our reference. Uh, you can see I'm making this right now. So I'm just going to angle it like that. And let's scale it down. Okay. So for this one, I actually think I need to bring these guys, I'm gonna make them a little thinner, first of all. And I'm gonna scale them, scale, take the whole group and angle it just a little bit more towards the vest. Okay. I'm gonna make this a little bit thicker. I'm kind of trying to match it up with the thickness that I did down here. So kind of match it up like this. Okay, so for this one, uh, I'm gonna make a multi-cut down this middle. And then let's angle this whole object a little more like this on the mesh. And then this face, we're going to be uh, extruding that and it's going to come on up and over. Obviously that's a bit far. We're gonna need to scale this down too because you can see I made it a little too thick. There we go, maybe more like that. Perfect. All right, and then take that face again and we can extrude it again and then just click W. I'm gonna scale it down a little bit. I'm going to add a multi-cut going about right there. And then we'll take this face and extrude it. And click W. And push them through here. Which you can go however far it needs to be. And then I'm just going to angle it a little bit better. Maybe like around there. 
I'm going to add one more multi-cut, maybe about there. And then you could technically probably just select these two and then do edit mesh bridge and it'll make a bridge going like that. Although it kind of went a little wonky. I'm going to change the source. Hmm. Okay, instead of doing that on the first try, we'll just extrude it again. Bring that thickness down. And then we'll take these faces and do the bridge. It might be the taper. Oh, there we go. So if there's taper accidentally on it, just take the taper and make it zero. Okay, so that's how it's looking right now. I'm going to angle that real quick. And I want to make it a little bit thicker on this side. I'm going to angle it and bring it on down. Okay. So that is how that's connecting currently. So it looks good. Um, I think, let's see, if we go ahead and look at our back reference, looks like there's a similar thing uh, kind of connecting it. So we can, um, we can add that in. We could also potentially um, just kind of leave that. Like kind of what I was thinking is that we could potentially just like group that and then duplicate it. And then we'll call this uh, strap. This is the buckle, and then this is also the buckle. And I'm going to rotate that. Um, let's do modify center pivot on that group. And then, there we go, rotate it and move it. There we go, we can kind of clip it into the mesh. Now for this guy, you might be thinking, oh, we have to model the other side again. Oh, that sounds awful. Um, but actually we can just mirror it. So I'm gonna just delete these faces and then we've got this object, which we can duplicate and rotate 180 to look like this. And then we can um, combine, do mesh combine to these objects. We'll have two rows of vertices as you can see like that so you're going to want to select the two vertices and then do um there it is so it's uh under edit mesh merge so you can do the same thing here you can select those two vertices do edit mesh merge and then edit mesh merge on those two so now when you move that there should only be one vertice there you want to do the same thing on these three see how there's two right now so you want to select those vertices and do edit mesh merge and then select those two edit mesh merge and these two edit mesh merge. So now you can kind of double check each of them should only be one on each of these corners, which means that when you move it, uh, there should be nothing hidden. All right. So now, uh, we can leave it like that. Um, we do need to move this group to actually fit into this, uh, which will mean rotating it and moving it. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna rotate it a little bit more. Maybe about like there. Okay. Great, so I'm just gonna press three on this and then push this guy back to its place. 
I'm feeling like this needs to be longer, so I'm just going to do that and just scale it and move it down. You can kind of do the same however you see fit. Um, I'm actually kind of noticing that like this kind of spans like the whole way. I didn't even really notice that. Um, so I'm going to scale it up and then we'll just do another deform bend on it. Um, and just make sure that we angle the bend the correct way like this. That's a weird issue to have. You see like part of it's peeking. Might just be able to select these faces and delete them. They might just be a mistake from the bend. Okay, well that seems to have gotten rid of the issue. If you select that object and do control one, you can isolate it and see kind of what went wrong. But I think that fixed it. So if you do control one again, uh, we can go ahead and leave it like that. So let's go ahead and delete all of our history. Um, that would mean that we, did, we do have a strap potentially that we can now group that whole strap and duplicate it and rotate it. Uh, you can do modify center pivot, so it's like this. And then we could rotate it 180 on the uh, Y axis and just push it on over um, to, let's see, a line. Maybe like about there. which you could also just find by looking at your group. Okay, that looks good. So now we have those straps. Uh, we still have a lot of details that we can kind of add in. Um, next, what we can kind of look at is adding in some of these interesting details that are this. A lot of like this kind of detail is all stuff that's just added in in the texturing process. Um, so I don't want to go like too far into like creating anything crazy like that. Uh, we can, however, just create some like rectangles that will um, kind of like symbolize that. I think what I'll do is I'll make one uh, long rectangle maybe about that length, and then um, let's make sure the scale is not incredibly weird. Okay, yeah, let's definitely scale it in. You can do control, control D, move it on down, and then if you click shift D, it'll do the exact same uh, transform. All right, we do need this same formation on the front, however, so uh, I'm going to want to duplicate that, move it on over. This one's thinner, kind of interesting. I'm just going to position it on the front. Oh, this is actually the back. I don't know what I'm talking about, the front. That's funny. Um, there you go, maybe like that. I might end up... Uh, actually, that looks fine. I'm going to push it down just like a tad. And then these guys will be attached to the front. Which we can see in this reference. Okay, so that's fine. Just adding like that quick little detail. I'm going to move this. I 
I think I mixed up my front and my back, so, <laughs> which is fine, not the end of the world, but, um, I actually, I think I got it, I think I got it. I'm gonna take these guys and scale them down and move them up, however. There we go. And then these guys... will be those front pieces that'll go here. Okay, there we go. So this will be the front, that's the back. All right, so um, we're getting into some more detail stuff. Um, this kind of stuff yeah, is interesting because you could create this using um, a cube that you scale like this and kind of position then each of these would be a multi-cut and then we would take those edges so this edge this edge all those edges and we could do control B to bevel it, give it two segments, make them eh, pretty small, not super small, and eh, maybe like 0.4. And then we would take those inside edges, each of these rings, and we would push them in like that. And then of course you can scale all this down to be kind of however you need to do that um, and then up to you if you want them to be like a more drastic pull uh, you would just push them more in like that but that's how I would make that like really basic shape of that like inner outer um, which we can go ahead and use that to add to our thing. One thing that I'm noticing is that like this does angle a lot so like we're gonna need to make sure that our angle is correct when attaching this onto here. Okay well, so let's see. It looks like it's right here. I'm gonna scale it up a little bit since it's a little more scaled. Okay, actually, that the angle that I had for that one looks good. I'm just going to do um, Control D and duplicate it and move it on up, and then Control D, move it on up, Control D, move it on up. So we just have all of them the same size, and then I'll go through and we can angle them the correct angle. Uh, also, I guess this one needs to be brought out more. There we go. So you just want to pull it out until there's no clipping. Alright, actually I like how this is turning out so far. I kind of like the stylized look of it. I like, I like stuff like that, so. All right, um, I do need a strip for the back. So I'm just gonna duplicate that and move it to the back and then we'll rotate it. Um, I guess it would be like maybe on the Y, yeah, the Y axis, there we go. And let's look at the back view. We'll do one there, do one there, and then do one here. So just duplicate that three times. And then let's look at the back view, and same thing, we just need to angle it, so you'll just move it and push it into the mesh. Okay, that was a little too angled. There we go. Okay, there we go. 
Oh wait, this one's clipping a little bit still. Okay, there we go. Now we got it. And then when I click three on this, I'm noticing it's rounding out a little bit. You could just scale it up or I think what I might do is just take each of these edges um, and just bevel them once. There we go. Then the edge doesn't like bevel out as much. I'll do the same to this. So just take this edge, this edge, this one, and this one, and bevel it. Um, okay, that's, that's fine. Okay, so we've got those details. Oh, I forgot one on the back. There's one on top. So just duplicate that real quick and then just push them on up. And then let me angle that and push that into the mesh. Okay, there we go. So that seems good. Um, Next would be these side portions, which uh, we can kind of do the same as our strap, um, which would mean we can, well, actually, technically, we could just take like how we did with the pipe and just make it go all the way around. So if you do shift right click when uh, you're not clicked on anything and make a pipe. You can kind of see how I'm envisioning, like, technically, we could use a, a pipe. It would just mean that, like, this would be a single object, which is fine. Um, I'm going to edit the pipe, however, to have a, a bigger radius. And then I'm going to scale it. And the thickness, I'm going to make 0.3. Okay. So now what we're going to want to do is take some of these edges and press them in. I might actually even scale them in and then press them in the mesh maybe something more like that yeah so I'm going to take these scale them then press them in okay interesting so those are those edges and then technically they have this on the uh, sides so we can take this Let's make that zero. Let's rotate it 90 degrees like that. Uh, I guess actually negative 90 to be more like that. And then uh, I guess I'm just going to use that deform tool that we've been using. Uh, you can do deform bend. Um, obviously, we need our curve to go with the mesh so something more like that uh, and then let's up that bend all right looks like that's going the wrong way um actually that that looks pretty accurate let's try 65 or 70 okay looks good 70 looks good so we can control d to duplicate that move it down and then do shift d to do the same we're going to take these three guys and do control D and duplicate them. And then you can group them with control G and then flip it 180 and then move it to fit on that side better. 
All right. Um, that's that last little kind of detail. There is also like a quick little loop in a pin. Um, the pin we can do from a super small sphere. So you can just make a sphere and then push that into place. And then we'll push that onto the back where it'll be clipping through the mesh like that. And then the little loop that you want to make, um, we could just do that um, using a pipe, just like we did the other ones. The only difference on this pipe is that we need to rotate it 90 degrees on, let's see, probably, I guess it's the Z axis. And let's see. Obviously, we need to make that radius, uh, or we need to make that thickness a lot smaller, maybe like 0.2. And I want to make the height a little bit smaller. There you go. Basically, something like this. Uh, let's see how big it is, I guess. Oh, it is actually a little bit thicker. About there. And then they just. They just clip it into the mesh like something like that. Okay. All right, so looking at my references, I feel like I've got most of those details in. Um, this has been a really interesting adventure. Um, this has not been something that I've ever got to do before. So this was really, uh, really fun. Uh, I do want to just like throw some really quick, like, I guess like just like a base color on it. Um, just to show it with some color. All of it seems to be the same color, except for like those details. So I guess I'll just select all of it and then unclick uh, those details and then hold right click and do assign new material and do shader um, AI standard surface. And I guess I'll just make it like that green. I'll just color match with my reference. And obviously you want to turn the roughness up since there should not be any reflection on it. Um, and then I'll assign these guys a new material, which it will be like that dark green, like this one. Roughness will go up. And I'll just make it that rough green. Nice. <laughs> very simple, very easy. Um, I'm going to save this real quick. Um... That's a great idea for you guys to do as well. <laughs> Make sure you are saving. And then I'm just going to grab an Arnold Skydome light. I guess I'll also grab a plane just to kind of give it something to, to sit on. Um, I usually give the checker material to that. Um, also, sorry if I'm doing this kind of quick. I want to try and make sure that I don't make this video too long for you guys. Um, but let's see. So once we render that out this is what we are looking with. So um, I want to make sure that three, the three keys turned on for all of the objects that we have. Um, of course, except for these details, those details should not, those this should be in the one key, right? But everything else should be good. Um, but this is uh, the end result. So uh, I'm interested to see what you guys think. I really haven't done clothing before, so I'm wondering if there's like a better way or an easier way to do it that you guys recommend. Um, but let me know. Uh, this was a, a very interesting learning experience. So I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial and had fun at least, you know, um, walking along with me. Um, we'll see what other tutorials I'm coming out with this May. 
uh, hopefully some exciting ones. I think I'm going to try and like do a character and an object and, and this one, obviously. So um, I hope you guys had fun. Check out my newsletter, um, subscribe, all the fun stuff. And um, I will see you guys in the next tutorial. Bye, guys.